more minutes of math today. We're going to talk a little bit more about, you got it, domain and range, of course. Now, we've talked about domain and range when it's uh, when we're given a collection of points, but what we haven't talked about is domain and range on a graph, of course. Yeah, I was saving the best parts for last. So real quick, let's remind ourselves what the definitions are of domain and range. Oh, yeah. So remember, the domain is a collection, right, of all of our input values, which are usually, but not always, but usually x values. And then our range is a collection of all of our outputs, which are all of our y values or maybe f of x's. Yeah, exactly right. So let's get a graph up here, man. Let's get to it. Yeah, that's more like it. That's what I'm talking about. Now we got a graph to work with. Okay. So remember, the domain is a collection of all of the x values represented. Now, when we were given a collection of points, there were only three or four x values re represented. So we would just list those three or four x values. On this line or this line segment, there's a lot of x values. There's x values all along this line. Remember, a line is a collection of points. So every single little dot on that line is a point. And I'm not about to write all of those x values down. Anybody got time for that? So it would be easier for us to just write a range of x values that we see here. Notice this line doesn't go on forever. This line only covers certain x values. So to write the domain for a situation like this, it's gonna look something like a compound inequality. Remember those? Yeah, let me refresh your memory. Our domain or our collection of x values is in between two of these x values on this graph. Yeah, and those two x values that are always gonna be uh-huh, the left edge of the graph and the right edge of the graph. And our graph is going to be in between those two values. Yeah, go ahead and write that down and put a box around it. That means it's important. So all I'm going to do is find the left edge of my graph, the x value that goes with it, put it here because domain is x's, and the right edge of my graph x value, put it there. Uh-huh, let's talk about this graph, right? The left edge of my graph is at x equals yeah, negative four, and that graph goes all the way out to an x value of where's the right edge of my graph at? Six, of course. Now, this open circle means something, the same it did on that number line for compound inequalities. Now, what this means is it goes all the way up to six, but it does not include six, so we got to get rid of that right there. Yeah. And now the domain of this graph, all of the x values represented by this graph are in between these two values. My entire graph is in between those two values. And that's the domain. That's the collection of x values represented by that line. Yeah, the range is the same, except for the range, it's y values. And instead of going from left to right, we go from bottom to top. Yeah, or if you like it better, floor to ceiling. Exactly right. So on this graph, what's the floor of my graph? Where's the bottom of my graph at? What y value? Because remember, range is y's. Yeah, negative 2 is the bottom of my graph. And where's the ceiling? Where's the top of my graph? What y value? 5. Exactly right. Oh, don't forget. It's not exactly equal to 5. Good. Very, very nice. This is the domain and the range for this particular graph. This entire graph is in between these two x values, and this entire graph is in between these two y values. Yeah, let's kick it up a notch with a different example. 